Now that the U.S. elections are over and things have quieted down a bit, let's dive into an analysis of the political campaign strategies of the two prominent figures, Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Disclaimer, this analysis does not support any candidate. I'm Nigerian, and as far as I'm concerned, T-Pain is the president, so please. <laughs> now, if you didn't already know, let me be the first to tell you, political campaigns are essentially massive marketing efforts. Candidates aren't just selling ideas, they're selling themselves. They use various marketing strategies and media platforms to reach their audience and achieve their goals. And let's be real, no one does it better than the United States. From the theatrics to the debates, the rallies, even campaign concerts, it's a masterclass in modern campaigning. This, in my opinion, is something other countries can learn from when it comes to engaging voters. And for the sake of this analysis, we'll focus on five key areas of their campaigns. We'll talk first about their personal brands, their messages, the platforms, the target audience, and lastly, the third party endorsements. Speaking about their personal brands, Kamala Harris had a personal brand of being a trailblazer. So the first woman, Black and South Asian Vice President of the United States, that's a big one, right? And prior to that, she was also the first woman, Black and South Asian District Attorney of California. So she had a history of being a trailblazer, of doing something that has not been done before, of being a first. So that was very inspirational. That was very emotional. I'm sure that there were women who think about Kamala and think, oh, I want to be like her. I want to be the first in my field. I want to be like this. She was very inspirational, very aspirational. There were women who probably didn't even know a lot about her, but because she was the first, they wanted to vote her and keep voting her. So she had that personal brand of a trailblazer and being inspirational going on for her. And then there was Donald Trump, who is the exact opposite. He's a businessman. Also, he was a television personality. However, I can't say that he was inspirational, but he was a typical white American man. He had a couple of bankruptcies. He had a couple of, what's the word, he, bankruptcies, felonies. So, and also he was very polarizing. He said things and people just caught fire. People probably hated him with passion, especially the media. So I think that when I think about his brand from a media angle, he was very notorious. He was very disruptive. However, his messaging positions him as somebody who was aligned with the traditional American values. You know, he was talking about family. He was talking about um, man and woman. He was talking about, oh, you know, there should be only two genders. That's man and woman. Women sh men should not be allowed to compete in women's sports. He was a very typical American rich white man, right? Meanwhile, Kamala was doing something different and her ideas were also very progressive. And I think this also aligns with the fact that they were from very different political parties as well. Kamala is from Democratic Party, which is typically aligned with progressive policies. While Donald Trump, on the other hand, was aligned with, was from the Republican Party. That's more aligned with conservative ideologies and traditional American values. So these two brands, I think they did a good job of differentiating their brands. You could, you cannot miss the two of them because they're very different from one another. One, the fact that different genders, but also their ideas and their personal brands were very different. Kamala was, if I think of Elsie, more classy, somebody that everybody wants to be. And I think that's why a lot of her campaign material touched on, you know, inspirational, talked on emotional. They focused a lot on the emotions. They were trying to, you know, get people to be emotional, think about what she has done as the first woman who has done it, it must have taken a lot of energy, you know. They very they keyed very heavily into that part and emotion because they wanted people to, you know, buy into that. <clears throat> However, based on my research, I could also tell that one person had a more famous brand because to give it to him, Trump was a president for a particular time. He was the 45th president of 45 right yeah 45 fifth president of the united states of america so he had been a president before so that means that more people knew him and like i said he was very polarizing he was always in the media there was a lot of there were a lot of his pictures on twitter even before this election so he was very well known i would argue that he even was well known compared to biden because i saw trump trump there yeah, he's i have like his meme saved on my phone even from here in nigeria so it means that a lot of people knew him and when you compare that to Kamala Harris, who only had about a few months to build her personal brand, 
in a way that more people knew her. I think that he that puts her at a disadvantage. So it means that Donald Trump had a more person a personal brand that was more known or he was more famous, especially because he had done TV before. He was more famous than Kamala. So I think that again that gave him an advantage over Kamala. And then also when we go down, now that said, when we move further to the fact that both of them have had times or tenors in the presidency. So Donald Trump has been the president for a while. And you know that your personal brand is not just what you say or the things that you do. It's also like your work. And both of them had been president for a while. So Donald Trump had people believing, Americans believing that when he was president, the economy was better than when Kamala was vice president. So it means that when you now say, okay, who will you choose? Since both of them have been in the economy, who will you choose? You want to choose somebody who you believe that his tenor was better. So I think, again, Donald Trump had that idea working for him because many people believe that his tenor as the president of America was better. I even watched a video where Obama was trying to convince people that the economy they said was better in Donald Trump's time was his economy. That's Obama's economy. Right? But that can be argued. Yeah? Because you can give somebody a good economy and they can spoil it. But it means he sustained it for a period of time. Meanwhile, Biden and Kamala didn't do that. So again, Trump had that going for him and he gave him an advantage over Kamala. So if I were to judge just based on this, their personal brand, I would say that Kamala's personal brand again was tied very keenly to emotions, while his Trump's was tied very keenly to facts. It was very logical. So he was the very logical choice, and Kamala was a very emotional choice, like the mor morally right choice. Like the yeah, the choice that I would want to make based on how I feel, my feelings, you know, based on the fact that she's a good person, she's a woman, she's, you know, when you are you're her stringing my emotions she's the one i would go for but when it comes to based on what we see who we know the policies that we have seen then i would go for i would go for trump that's based on that and i would also say that i think that one thing that kamala's team could have done to help was probably if biden had just stepped down for a few months like just stepped down and allowed her to become the president it would have skyrocketed her brand way more like more people would have known her and she would have she would have probably been able to beat the gap because i think that when it comes to personal brand and being famous and people knowing you trump had that going so if he if they had done something very disruptive as opposed to just the emotional thing they had going there would have been more because there would have been more people knowing her she would have reached far and wide because i'm sure that there are certain places where people didn't know kamala is prior to the four months that she started campaigning so yeah, that's my opinion on their personal brands. Now, moving away from that, let's go to their messaging. Their messaging here ties into what they were saying, what they were telling the American people. Like I mentioned, Trump was very traditional. He's the very typical American white man. So his policies were very typical to what those people like in terms of the traditional values, in terms of economy recovery economy recovery in terms of national security in terms of his american first policies make american great again maga also his slogan it was very it was very on point to the things that most american people were thinking about i think that his messaging hit people where he needed to hit them and he was very famous with what the popular crowd felt and when i say popular crowd i mean that what the general public were thinking. His message hit on that way, way more. On the other hand, Kamala's policies and messages were more on, you know, social equality, um, pro-choice, climate change, affordable health care. All of these are not bad things, but it was very neat. It was very neat to a particular type of people, right? And those people were not, in my opinion, the majority. So while she was talking about these progressive ideas that were good and probably most people could have bought into it, the people who understood it immediately were not the majority. And I think that that posed a problem for her from a media perspective. Because there's a, there's a media theory that talks about the fact that if you want to get people's buying into something, 
it's easier to do it when the idea that you're selling to them is aligned to what they believe. So I believe that this person is a girl or this person is a man and that's who he is. He has a penis. He has XY chromosomes. That's who he is. Meanwhile, her mother comes and tells me that, no, this person can undergo operations and he becomes a woman. Of course, I'm going to fight that. Of course, it's going to take you a while to convince me. And she only had a few months to do that. So she didn't have enough time to be able to convince me. Meanwhile, there's another person on the older hands who tells me, yes, you're not mad. That person is a man. He was born a man. That's the only gender. I am more poised as a person to go with him as opposed to going to Harris. So what I'm trying to say here is Harris's policy were very different from what people are used to. And then she didn't have enough time to convince people on it. So it means that typically more people went in the way of Trump because her message was very unique to a particular type of people, a particular type of people being progressive, being women, being, you know, and also her messaging was more, it was disruptive. And I feel like it also was larger than her personal brand. So it means that a lot of people, when they think about, oh, gay rights, and they think about abortion, they think about Kamala Harris, and they think about it in a negative way. They don't even understand the good part of it that she's trying to explain to them because it's just not the norm for most people. And it's a good thing in the term that for you to make a change in the world, you have to be different. And that, that's what makes her a trailblazer. She's doing something that has not been done before. However, I think that from a media aspect, she focused too much on those things that were not priority for most people. I'll explain it. As much as I understand where she's coming from and how progressive her ideas are and why they're important, in the large scheme of, in the, in the scale of things, those are not the things that are priority for me right now. And so, because I'm not transgender, I'm not in, I don't belong to the LGBT community. Um, I've never probably thought about having abortion or had abortion before. I don't buy into that, right? However, so, so it means that I'm not very, her, her message is not speaking to me. Yeah. So because I'm not in that community that she's speaking to, her messaging is not speaking to me. It's not speaking to my needs. So I feel left out. Whereas there's Donald Trump, he's, who is talking about economy recovery, who's talking about national security, who's talking about making America great again. That speaks to me, regardless of my gender, regardless of my sexuality, regardless of my body, economy, security. These are things that are important. And it brings us back to the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Before people start to think about their gender, before people start to think about, oh, abortion and all of this climate change, they first think about money, money to eat. They first think about security. They first think about shelter. So he, I feel like Donald Trump was talking directly to the things that people needed at the time. And his policies covered a wider group of people. So it was, it was cutting across gender. It was cutting across religion. His messaging was cutting across race. It was cutting across, right? It was cutting across a larger pool of people compared to Harris. Harris's message, in my opinion, was more targeted to a particular set of people. You had to be this way to, to feel like you could understand her messaging, to think that it was important for her. My opinion in that would have been that there should have been a balance between the things she was talking about, these ideas that she had that were good, talking about it, but also she should have talked about the economy. She should have talked about peace, what you would do to make all of these things better. And because she left those parts out like they weren't important, I think that it lost her some people who were just not interested in things you're talking about right because I, I don't understand it i'm not i don't belong to this community so if that's the only thing you're coming to do for us then i'm out so i think that that was where there should have been a balance and i think again that gave donald trump an opportunity there to to move forward now let's move on to their platforms the platform here talks about how they communicated their messaging to their target audience should we do target audience first Okay, let's do no platform first. Let's do platform. Yeah, platform is how they communicated their messaging to their target audience, right? And they both did rallies. They both used digital media, even though I think that one person did one way better than the other. For instance, I think Kamali. Let's say Kamali. I'm sorry, 
Kamala did very great with digital media. Her TikToks were booming. You know, they were responding. They were engaging. They had memes. Like, she did a lot with that. And I think that that was great. She had a lot of celebrities using their platforms, their social media. And it's great because with digital media, I think that you can reach more people, right? You can reach a whole wild, wild, wide, wide range of people, which is very great. And Donald Trump also did a bit of did the digital media as well. However, I think that because he also had more times, he went on tours. He went to rural places. He met people who were also not online. Where he was able to get them at their core and he helped him a lot more. He, I think he was more traditional and very offline with his tours, with his rallies. I think that they helped him to, you know, reach more people as well. And also he was tapping into the digital media because he did a couple of things with the, he was on podcast. Um, Kamala was also on podcast. He was also on Twitch. He had Twitter where he had an advantage with Elon Musk. So he also did digital media. I think that actually, I think they both did pretty well with digital media. And I think the advantage here for Donald Trump was the fact that he had more time to build on his offline platforms because he did more tours and more rallies and spoke to more people. And what that did for him is he had more intimate intimate conversations with his people. He met these people where they are at and told him what he was trying to tell them. Meanwhile, I don't think that Kamala had that much time to talk to people. And interestingly, I think that she needed the most time because if you're trying to sell these ideas that you're trying to tell that are different, that is different from what, what most people believe, you should meet them where they are at. You should like talk to people where they're at, right? Um, yeah, you should talk to people where they're at. And I don't think that she had enough time to do that. But aside that, her digital media was really good, very good work. The videos were very very interesting they were also going wild and going viral so that was really good for both of them okay now let's talk about the people their target audience from their messaging from their personal brand you can already tell who they were speaking to so starting first with kamala harris kamala harris was speaking to a minority group she was speaking to women she was speaking to young people she was speaking to black people she was speaking to people like her she was speaking to people who are progressive the problem is these people are not the majority right they're not the majority they're people who, they're they're little communities i mean they will keep growing as time grows but however they're not the majority so those were her target audience and i think that that poised as a challenge for her because when you are trying to be a president you're not just president of the minority group you're president of the whole wide country everybody so when your message is only speaking to the minorities only speaking to women only speaking to young people you're leaving out a large crowd. I mean, eventually, as time continues to go on and she continues to campaign, if she continues to like come out for to contest, I think it will eventually start to catch up because young people will continue growing and older people will probably die and leave the world, right? She would gain more momentum. But this time, the she focused heavily on this minority group and I feel like she left she she ignored in my opinion the older people that's what i think and then trump did a better job of convincing the popularity the popularity or the the more populous people like the the majority yes he did more job convincing the majority i think that his target audience were people who were rural people who were not progressive people who were middle class people who were the typical white americans people who so i think that his entire audience were brother so it's just like if you want to catch a lot of fish right if you want to convince a lot of people i think it's better somebody who goes to a river and somebody who goes into an ocean one person is probably going to catch has a, has positioned themselves to catch a shark whereas the other person has not so i feel like he had a more he had a larger pool to pick from he had a larger pool of people to contest from too it's just like somebody who wants to have a global who wants to have a global career you cannot just be talking nigeria 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 you need to start talking about other countries and other things that concern them because you need to start talking about global issues and getting yourself in global places so that's how i feel i feel like kamala's people or target audience were very unique they were not the populace and she did not do a good job of trying to get the people who were the majority i think she could have done she could have done better <clears throat> in that 
in that aspect now moving on to i think we've talked about the personal brand we talked about their messaging we talked about their platform we talked about their target audience the last thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the third party endorsement like the endorsement people who spoke about them right for kamala she had a lot of celebrities she had her whole concerts with megan the stallion that was that was fresh that has that was never been never had that be done before that was really great and i think it was aligned with her messaging one thing i would give kamala is she was very on brand she knew the people she was trying to talk to she knew what her message was she presented herself uh, she was aligned to it so she did a lot of things that were different from the norm it made a lot of sense so i would give her a hundred over a hundred on that so megan the stallion she had a lot of celebrities talking about her a lot of popular people from lebron james to beyonce so like all the i feel like all the celebrities that i know were really rooting for her right and that's like great good good stuff good stuff but we also had donald trump who had he had a lot of the people who people would say are not morally right campaigning for him right he had a lot of the other side campaigning for him um i saw him with a couple of celebrities i mean he had someone like elon musk elon musk is also very radical again he aligns with donald trump's personal brand he also had a couple of people that i don't remember their names but they had they had clouds i think i saw him on with a couple of influencers white influencers who were rooting for him and all of that so he also had cloud they both had very good cloud but in terms of the fact that as i said kamala's brand was very aspirational the people who were aligned with her were also very like that i mean lebron james you want to be a very great basketballer you know beyonce you know the opera all of these people were very aligned and it was great meanwhile donald trump had people who were probably you would say they are notorious people who are radical people who are very much like him who were campaigning for him and who endorsed him but also i think that he had people who were also politically savvy who were also riding behind him people who were like people who were interested in politics right i think that that's something he had at his advantage right aside from you know obama and mitchell and a couple of other people i think that most of the people who were endorsed kamala were people who were not really involved in politics right i'll take for instance on megan the stallion as much as the concert was great i don't think that megan is very interested in politics and i think that after the campaign she would go back to doing her music and twerking and all of this stuff which is good however as somebody who wants to vote i don't think that i will look at her and give her and i i don't think i'll look at her and say because of her i'm going to vote this person right because it just doesn't align it's like mm, i don't trust you that well when it comes to making a decision for my future for my country right i don't trust you and what you stand for i don't think you stand for anything that is politically aligned right so it was very off it was a good strategy but i think that there's a media theory actually there's a media theory that says that a brand and the person who endorses them they need to be aligned right and i think that while um megan the stallion was aligned with kamala's branding of being liberal progressive a woman her body it wasn't aligned in terms of like this is politics that we're talking about i don't trust this person to make to influence me to make a decision on who should be my president she's not even involved in politics she doesn't even know what we're talking about sorry i'm not going to follow her however donald trump has somebody elon Musk, who is very involved in business who is very involved in like in what he was speaking about elon Musk is typical is very much a, a donald trump in his own right elon Musk is a very active very he plays in the field right in the business field in the technology field in the political scene he is more involved he's more hands-on and not only did he just come to show his face he put his mouth where he put his money where he, his mouth is he gave out money he was very hands-on it's like somebody who said i'm not just coming to twerk and be a part of this so that i even think that 
Kamala probably paid Megan. I think I'm not sure, but I think that Trump put his money where his mouth is. He was involved in it. He believed in it. He was very much for when I think about Kamala and I think about Megan, they're very opposite. They're not the same when it comes to being a person, right? So I understand while I understand Kamala tapping into um tapping into Megan for you know the whole body thingy and her policies it doesn't make sense as thinking that that is somebody that would influence me when it comes to politics meanwhile Elon Musk because he has been speaking on certain things he has been speaking about freedom of speech he has been he believes in certain things his people believe him his people are more the people that Donald Trump need people believe him for what he's speaking on I'm trying to explain this very well. I hope that you get to me. It's like Donald Trump, his community, okay, Elon Musk, his community, the community that he has cultivated over the years, believe him when he says Donald Trump is the person we should vote for because he has been speaking about certain things that tie into what they're speaking on because he's in business, he's in politics. It's already his community are from the people that will vote are from the people that believe him in terms of that, in terms of what he's speaking about. What he's speaking about is not far from who he is, who he, who he is as a person, as a business person. Meanwhile, Megan, her music, everything that she speaks about doesn't really tie into politics. It's not, it's not who she is. This thing that she's doing is very far from who she is. And so as her community, even though I enjoy her music, I don't, I would not necessarily think that she would be the right person to tell me who to vote for. So I think that it was a strategy, but it could have also been, you could have worked against her as well. So that's what I think. Um, so if I were to give an advice, I would think of somebody who, I would think of somebody who is more aligned, who has the power to make people take actions when it comes to policies or politics, which she has people, she had, and for Kamala, she had people like Obama and she had people like, um, she had people like Michelle and Oprah Winfrey and all of that doing that. But the rest of them, I don't necessarily, even Beyonce, I don't think that Beyonce would tell me who to vote for and I would vote for because she's not even involved in things like that, you know? So yeah, these are my ideas. These are things that I think based on the things that I saw. And again, I would say well done to the United States for a free and fair election. And I wish them the prosperous, a good, next four years the people spoke and i hope that it is it brings prosperity to the land and for them and yeah from my own side as an independent analysis analyst <laughs> thank you very much for listening and until next time i mean jessica fortress bye